The other day I was on an electronics parts website and under the listing for anti-static foam, the same foam which you usually get circuit chips shipped in, it said that the internal resistance was in upwards of a few mega ohms. I wanted to measure this resistance for myself. So I stuck two wires into the foam, connecting it to my multimeter, and sure enough I got a reading of a few mega ohms. I was uh, quite excited to discover that when you compressed the foam, the reading actually decreased to a few thousand ohms. Um, with this in mind, you can build a circuit that allows you to determine if this foam is compressed or not compressed. Um, it does have an analog output, so the reading can be um, read with a, a microcontroller or some other circuit, and essentially you could tell how much weight is on the foam, but due to temperature and humidity and in, in the placement of the wires in the foam, it's extremely unreliable and uh, other than just for the fun of it, it would really serve no useful purpose in a real world uh, application. So what I decided to do was take some of this uh, spray electrical tape, it's basically a rubberized coating, and I sprayed that onto a piece of this, this same foam. And that gives me a much sturdier cell. You know, I'm, I'm going to call it a load cell, even though it is in no way, shape, or form a load cell. The, um, the rubberized coating actually allows it to compress and then go back to its uncompressed state a little bit quicker because it has that just outward sort of elastic force on it, if you want to call it that. Um, so this load cell, I'll, I'll show you it to you right now. We'll connect it to the digital multimeter. And this number is going to vary, like I said, but right now you can see that it is, it's a, hovering around 20 mega ohms. Um, if I were to compress it, it's going to take a bit for it to kind of settle down, but it is in the um, 1000 ohm range. It's going to be ranging anywhere from uh, about 30 thousand ohms all the way up to maybe 600 800 um, thousand ohms so what can we do with such a cell um, like I said you can hook it up to a circuit and measure the analog outputs and be able to measure weight but it's gonna be just so unreliable basically all you're gonna be able to measure is is it compressed or is it not compressed either way it's not gonna output a, a true digital signal so you've got to be able to create a comparator circuit the circuit I decided to build um, uses the LM339 quad op amp comparator. This is a very basic chip that you can get most anywhere. Happen to get this at Radio Shack. Um, so inside the chip you have the four comparators and since we're measuring resistance, yeah, I mean on this leg we're gonna put a 6.6 .6 mega ohm resistor and we're going to tie this to ground on the other side we will put another 6.6 .6 mega ohm resistor and tie that to our source so that completes one half of the comparator the other half will get connected to a 680 ohm, 1000 ohm, I'm sorry, resistor. Attaching this to the load cell which we have already constructed. 
the other leg will be connected to our source voltage. Pin 12 of this chip must also be grounded. Pin 3 is supply. And pin 1 is the output of the second comparator. For this circuit, we will just use your everyday light emitting diode or LED. So this is a completed circuit and once you have constructed this you will be able to fully test your load cell and uh, maybe do some everyday applications. So let me get you the circuit which I have constructed. So going from the schematic which I have just showed you to a real circuit you can see the LM339 voltage comparator which is in a 14 pin dip package a um, voltage regulator supply which I have created over here which supplies my ground and 5 volts uh, DC power um, right here you can see two 3.3 mega ohm resistors in series to give me the 6.6 .6 mega ohms of resistance um, that's tying to the ground and then we have another 6.6 .6 mega ohms tying to our supply here's the 300 and, no, 680 kilo ohm resistor tying to ground which our load cell will be tied between pen 6 and our source over here is our LED which is has its anode on the uh, source voltage and its cathode is connected to the output which is pin 1 of the voltage comparator. So now in theory when we connect the voltage comparator to pin 6 and to our source voltage the circuit is complete. Now keep in mind this circuit is nowhere near ideal but it does uh, it certainly proves the concept and uh, the biggest reason why it is not ideal is because the sensor is not ideal the resistance inside of it is um, completely uh, it's never going to be absolute so anyhow as you notice the LED is off and when I compress the foam it is lit. Now when I uncompress the foam it's going to take a bit for that foam to fully expand back out and create that internal few mega ohm resistance and that is why you will see the light um, blink a few times. Again I will compress it the light will turn on and when I let go it should turn off fairly quickly. Now if you want to create this circuit for yourself um, using some of this bla black anti-static foam the resistor values will be different. Um, I built this circuit a couple days ago and even then the resistor values were completely different and again I think that has to do with uh, the temperature of the foam, possibly the humidity and just th just the fact that the foam is not it's not supposed to be used as a measurement device. But once again, just for fun, I will hook this up and show you that it is an excellent, excellent sensor to just kind of experiment with. And um, I hope you enjoyed this short video on this, uh, I guess you could consider a discovery, which I have found. Um, maybe other people already knew about this. I don't know. Again, there's not really any any application where this would be practical but it's it's extremely fun to just kind of build a circuit and know that you built your own little sensor so maybe someday I'll make another video like this I don't know it's kind of fun so um, that's the end of my video